welcome back to another video and today something a little bit different so if you are already uh, an owner of a Tesla Model 3 you have this installed from the factory but if you're not and if you're one of those people that has a car from a different manufacturer um, then you need one of these things I think because safety um, and security is very 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 important for everybody involved so what am I talking about I'm talking about a dash cam so this particular dash cam was sent to me uh, from iZeeker for review and I'm going to be testing it out today to see if this is a viable choice, viable option for, uh, for you guys to install in your vehicles um, and, and have that added safety and security because you never know what can happen and it's good to have um, evidence, right? So evidence is most important. So before we begin, um, just a quick disclaimer, this uh, dash cam itself was sent to me from iZeeker for free. Um, but uh, they do not influence any part of uh, this video and all opinions about the product itself are going to be 100% mine. I'll tell you the good, the bad, and what I think should be improved. Um, before we get into um, installing and then some uh, driving footage so you guys can see the quality, I'm going to roll a quick unboxing that I did uh, just this morning before um, I actually, you know, touch this camera for the first time. So let's roll that and after that we will get into the main part of the review. So this is the box that the dash cam comes in. As you can see it says here 4K Wi-Fi GPS touchscreen dash cam on the front. It's got some icons here on the sides. So 4K UHD recording, GPS tracking, Wi-Fi control and a Sony sensor. So Obviously, we'll try to figure out how good this sensor is and if it's worth buying this dash cam simply because of the Sony sensor. Anything else? Ah, just some stuff on the back here. Um, your compliance information as well as the company info. So let's open it up. I haven't opened it yet. So this is going to be kind of like an unboxing first impression of things. What does it say here? Your virtual eye capturing everything. Well, that's good because that's what a dash cam should be doing. So here we go. Uh, this is just a quick start guide. This is your manual that comes included. We'll read those later. And that's the dash cam itself. But here, and I really like these icons. Really, really cool. You know, when it comes to Chinese manufacturers and packaging, they're not really always that great. but this packaging looks pretty awesome and it's got a little tab to pull it up. So what do we have here? Oops, what is this? Oh, that's great that they include this. So this is a tool that you can then, um, you know, connect your dash cam to a power source, probably somewhere on the bottom of your dashboard. And then you can hide the cable within the trim of your car. So this will help you to poke um, the cables inside the trim so they don't stick out. So that's always very good to, to see included. So. I like that. All right, let's put that to the side. So this is your uh, 12 volt cable that uh, you can just put into your into your car's uh, quote unquote cigarette lighter, as it used to be called, but now it's just a 12 volt outlet, and it has a pass through for a USB as well. So um, you're plugging it in, and then you're getting an extra USB port, which is cool. Um, that is the GPS module here, um, and it comes with some sticky tape that you can just fasten it to the windshield so you get good reception and a USB type C cable I'm guessing this one goes directly into the dash cam so it's great that it's USB type C because most of the other dash cams that I've seen on the market comes with come with the USB micro the old one um, there's not much support for it so yeah that's pretty good what else so this is the suction cup mount for the camera itself. I'm not going to open this until we get in the car. Um, what else? We have this one, another USB type C cable to just standard USB. Um, so this one, I guess, will be to connect your camera to your computer to update firmware, maybe, um, or to get your footage off the camera. If you don't want to use the app that is included, well, not included, but you can download the app as well and use the app to transfer but I'll show that later. So anything else? Some extra sticky tape in case you need it. Anything else? No, nope, that's empty. We don't need that. And then here, this comes in this like little nice protective plastic. And let's get rid of the box. 
and this is the camera itself so this is the first time I'm looking at it oh not bad it looks pretty good so you've got your 4k um, ultra HD uh, logo here iZeeker is the company that makes these uh, that's your lens so it has a nice lens protector and that's your touch screen so that's pretty big um, you know like old um, touch screen phones that came out a while ago um, anything else that's to connect the uh, suction cup mount so you can then put this onto your windshield um, those are those USB C ports there's two of them so we'll figure out which one goes for power and which one goes for data what do we have here this one is an SD card slot so we will also figure out what kind of size of SD card we can fit in there here you have some venting because these cameras you know stay on all the time right at the windshield um, so it does take um, a beating in terms of how much um, heat and, and, and so forth and cold in the winter it will take so it's good to see some venting here as well for the summer days when it gets really hot and this is simply a power button here and I think this one is a microphone but we'll figure that out and I'm guessing this one is a speaker so all right looks good but the best part about this camera and what made me really 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 excited to have a look at it is the lens itself so I don't know if you guys can see it now it's pretty clear here it's a 1.8 so a 1.8 that's the aperture of the lens now if you guys are not familiar with photography the lower the aperture the more light goes into the sensor and therefore you can use this camera in very very low light obviously I will test it out later today we'll take it out during daytime and we will also take it out during nighttime just to see how good it is as a camera at night because one of these dash cams really really important to make sure it works well nighttime as well but that is great and if we're talking about the sensor being from Sony I think they're onto something here okay so I'm not gonna peel this back yet I'm gonna go and install this camera in the car get everything set up get the app set up and um, yeah and do a little bit of testing so now let's go to the car and see how it all mounts how it all connects and then we'll take it for a drive and see what the performance is like so this is what I figured out so we have our 12 volt connection right there so I use some of the twisty ties that came with the camera to tie this up because this is quite a long uh, line I mean it would be okay to string along all the way down here and then towards the bottom so it, they do give you a lot to work with so that's pretty good so thanks for that but then I just had to do this so I placed the GPS module right here and then this cable is a little bit too long I would say um, it just hangs like that obviously you can put it towards the edge somewhere there or towards the edge here um, if you're going to be installing this um, permanently but for now that's how it is it's not the best but like I say this is only for the purposes of this review I'm going to be trying different things later
So what did you guys think of the samples both day and night? Pretty interesting, right? So now it is time to conclude our review by looking at the hits and the misses of the iZeeker 4K dash cam and to see if I would recommend for you guys to put this dash cam into your vehicle and to use it on a daily basis. So let's start first with the hits. The first hit, it's pretty simple. I think that the touch screen, three inches, pretty good. Um, it's very easy and very intuitive to use. The menus are very simple. You can get at anything really, really fast. And I think that's important in a dash cam because um, you should just be able to reach over, change settings if you need to, and not think too much about it. So I would say that the touch um, response is pretty good. It's similar to smartphones from a few years ago, obviously not on par with the latest iPhones and Android devices, but still pretty good. Viewing angles are pretty awesome too. Um, so yeah, generally I would say that um, the, the touch screen is one of the highlights of, of this dash cam for sure. The next hit is definitely the suction cup mount. It's very easy to install. I really, really like the mechanism. It's much better than that I use the one to mount my GoPro. So if anybody makes suction cup mounts like this for GoPros, I will definitely be a customer and would want to get one of those because it's really simple to, to attach to your windshield and you can put it in different places um, and just move it around and see where it works best for you. So you can't beat the price. I'll put up a screenshot right here from Amazon. Um, right now in Canada, it costs around a $110 after discount. So really for $110 to get a camera that looks like that, the design is really nice. Touchscreen functionality is very good. All of the accessories that you get with GPS included, I think the price point is well, on point, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, sure, there's cheaper versions. It's not, there are cheaper options, not versions, but cheaper options out there. Um, but I don't know if how good they are. So this one, for the price, I would say it's pretty good. As you guys saw from the sample recordings, daytime recording quality in 4K is pretty good. License plates are clearly readable. Um, you can see a wide angle because it's a 170 degree lens. Um, the aperture itself, like I mentioned before, is a 1.8. Again, very bright. So I think daytime recording, both in direct sunlight with sunlight behind your car, and obviously during uh, you know noon time when the when the sun is right up ahead, I think all of them are pretty good. So for daytime recording, excellent. So now let's begin with the misses. And one of the biggest ones for me, simply the bracket itself, the way that the camera attaches to the bracket, it's really, really hard to put it on and take it off. So for example, if you mount it on your windshield, it's really hard to remove the camera and take it home and download your, um, uh, your videos. For example, if you do not have a card reader at home, um, you would have to take the camera in and download Im images or, or videos that you wanted to. So the mechanism, should be better maybe a quick release maybe a magnet i know that some of the other cameras that they have from iZeeker, they use different mechanisms like magnets and so forth and i think that this should have been done here so i want this camera to be portable and easy to you know let's say remove and take it with me if i need to and that's something that i didn't see here next on the list is the gps module i'm very happy that it's included because gps tracking is very important so that's something that, for example, if you get into a car accident, you can simply download that footage. GPS coordinates are included and you know exactly where that happened. And then you can show the authorities that as well, plus your insurance company. But the way that they integrated the GPS module separate of the mounting system just simply doesn't work for me. Um, plus, you have to put it on the windshield directly using sticky tape. So if, for example, if you have one dash cam and multiple cars, you can't move them because every time you remove the GPS module, the sticky tape get, gets less sticky. Sure, they include another sticky tape inside the package for you, but I, trust me, you're going to run out and it's going to be, you know, hard to then keep that on, especially when the car is moving. So definitely, I would say for the next dash cams that they produce somehow integrate the GPS module into the mounting system so it's just there and that's it a lot of the other companies on the market do it this way the biggest problem is nighttime recording as you saw I drive a Kia Soul EV 
So you can say, quote unquote, it's an SUV. It's a little bit higher than the standard sedan. And I have LED headlights. So at nighttime, the cars in front of me and their license plates are totally washed out. Totally. Unless it's a car that's a bit higher than me, then you can see partially the license plate. And that's a big no-no. I mean, having a dash cam, you need to make sure that you know if something happens in front of you, even at night, you're able to read that license plate and collect evidence. If that license plate is not readable, well, it defeats the purpose of having a dash cam. So I think that for me, nighttime recording is the most important, more important than anything else. So here I would say that this is the biggest miss and the biggest problem that I have with this dash cam. The image quality is just not good enough. Like I said, I, I, I don't know if I need all the other functionality that I have, like Wi-Fi and all of this stuff. I would say it's better to take that money, invest it into a better sensor and or better software that then looks at the exposure and corrects it according to the car you drive. Sure, if you have an older car with normal headlights, then you wouldn't have that problem. But many of us drive new vehicles with LED headlights and it just, as you guys saw, it's all washed out. So that is my biggest, biggest issue with this camera. If it had better nighttime recording, it would 100% be a no brainer. Go out and buy right now. But because of this, I don't know, it's, it's hard to recommend, but we'll get to the to the end in my recommendation. Like I just mentioned, the Wi-Fi connectivity for me is simply a gimmick. I would rather, again, that they invested this money in other more important functions of the camera. But my biggest disappointment was the app. Um, when you first launch it, and I'll show it to you guys right here, there are ads. Yes, I'm not joking. There are ads. And... I don't know. I already paid for the camera. You'd think that the app itself would be free to use without the intrusion of ads. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, so yeah, inclusion of ads in an app for a camera that I paid for just doesn't work for me. Sorry. And I install, I, I uninstall this app immediately and I just grabbed this, these frames for you guys just to show you what it looks like. Should you or shouldn't you buy this dash cam? I think at the end of the day, it all depends on what kind of car you drive. In my instance, with LED headlights, it's simply impossible to get a clear picture of the license plate in front of me. And I would say that that is the most important part of having a dash cam. That if something happens in front and I get into an accident and the driver flees, I will be able to find him again. So for me, with LED headlights, unfortunately, this is not a viable choice. However, if you own a car that is older, or has a different setup in terms of the headlights, then maybe possibly this could be a choice. Now, do you really need a dash cam in general? I think that you do. Um, this is something that Tesla put into all of their cars and I believe it's a viable thing to have. It helps you in those situations where you need to prove your innocence in a car accident or if there are no witnesses to come forward, at least you have a recording with a GPS coordinate of where that accident happened. So I would say that, you know, there are so many options on the market today that paying a little bit more and getting a better sensor and something that actually works as intended, I think that's the most important part. So would I recommend this dash cam for someone who has a situation like me, drives a not an SUV, but a car a little bit higher off the road with LED headlights, I wouldn't say that it's a good option. I myself would not be using it. So and there are others on the market. Hopefully, maybe one day I will get to test other uh, cameras from other manufacturers and see if this is an isolated case just with this company or other cheaper dash cams suffer from the same um, uh, overexposure. But yeah, that's it. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope you liked this review. If you did, please make sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, take care, goodbye.